When I was a really young kid, uh, I, I grew up in Korea. When I visited the United States, when I was about seven years old, six years old, uh, I had the opportunity to watch Star Wars for the very first time in Man Chinese Theater in Los Angeles. I was completely out of this world. It blew my mind. And since then, uh, on my flight back to Korea, I decided that I'm going to grow up and become a robot scientist. And I never changed my mind. And now I'm here. A lot of our robots are really innovative, really imaginative. So the idea is really comes from uh, literally when I'm asleep. So every night, about 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, I start to see these lines and circles floating around in my hair, head in different colors. And they assemble and come up with some kind of really interesting shapes and uh, mechanisms. So what I do is at the middle of the night, 3, 4 a.m., I wake up. And next to my bed, I have this journal with a pen that has a light because I don't want to wake up my wife. And I jot down all the uh, ideas that I have and I go to bed. So true story, every, morning in the, uh, every day in the morning when I wake up before my first cup of coffee, before br brushing my teeth, I open up my journal and try to actually decipher what I wrote because most of the time it's just jumbled up, I don't know what it is. So sometimes, most of the time it's junk, but many times I see something really, really interesting. And if I do see that, I go to my computer, type it up, I have a database with all my ideas, and in the future, when uh, funding agencies come up with different uh, calls for proposals, I find the match, and I write a proposal, and we get the research funding, and then we get to do a lot of fun, cool robotics research work. <laughs> all of our robots, well, they're all my babies. I love them all, from Strider, the three-leg walking robot, to our human robot, Darwin series robot, to our blind driver challenge vehicle, which indeed is a robot. All of them are really innovative, and they have this special thing on their own way. In, in, on way. Again, absolutely our success in Romella is really me with my students working together, both graduate and undergraduate students. So our graduate students work on the high-profile, externally funded research projects. The undergraduate students work with them, with me, together as a group. Uh, so for them, it's an opportunity for them to taste what really research is about. So many times, uh, they get hooked and they become my graduate students. For me, I get a chance to really get to know them so I can really uh, identify the good ones and they pick them as graduate students and they're already pre-trained and they're ready to go. Uh, really the secret to our success is that we're having too much fun. You know, the best uh, progress is made when you're having fun, so that's what we're doing. So most of the ideas come from my sleep. However, those seed ideas, I bring it to our gr weekly group meeting. So we, we enjoy these uh, brainstorming sessions. So at the brainstorming sessions, every uh, once every you know, now and then, I say, hey, this week let's talk about trying to come up with a solution, innovative solution to a particular problem. And then uh, at the brainstorming session, the rule is anything goes. And you can say about anything, and nobody criticizes those ideas. Sometimes many ideas are you know, not feasible. That's OK. If somebody says, oh, let's put a nuclear reactor in a robot, I say, let's do it. So it, that way, you have an open environment, so nobody's really afraid to express their opinions. And that's how really creativity comes out. And many times, you have really interesting solutions. Some of the solutions are based on my initial ideas. Some of them are completely new that I haven't really thought about. And those become actual research projects. And that's how, that becomes, uh, that's how we, uh, the Romola becomes the idea factory. So the Raphael Hand is one very interesting project. It started as an undergraduate senior design project and then an uh, undergraduate uh, research project. The Raphael Hand is a unique robotic hand that is uh, operated by compressed air. The really neat thing about this concept, there's a lot of different type of robotic hands out there and as a product, a very, very expensive or research uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, product. But in this case, uh, we're using the concept of underactuation uh, and passive compliance. We're using compressed air. So unlike regular robot arms, passive compliance is something good because you want to actually grasp objects with different sizes, different shapes, and different consistency and different textures. But the best part is, it's dirt cheap. It only took us $200 to build the first prototype. So not only for robotics applications, not only for research and education robotic hand, this hand has a huge potential as a, a possible use for prosthesis to help people who lost their arm or hand. So it has great potential, and we uh, intend to continue working on this project. Many of the robots that we have really address uh, uh, real life problems, tangible problems, solutions to those kind of things. A uh, good example, as I mentioned, is the robotic hand Raphael for prosthesis. The blind driver challenge, challenge vehicle, helping the blind, uh, giving them freedom, and also giving them hope of what technology might be able to bring them to uh, give them freedom. Uh, our three-leg robot Strider, the hexapod robot Mars, the actuator spoke wheel uh, uh, robot Impasse, uh, for high moldy for search and rescue operations. 
Building collapses, we need to send in robots. Wheels, legs can do. So we developed this amoeba where it can squeeze between obstacles. Medical applications, endoscopes that they put down your throat, very painful. This can actually go down your gastrointestinal tract. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 real applications that all of these robots can be actually used. Yeah, the best part of my job is really my interaction with the students. In the classroom, outside the classroom, in the lab, and out of the lab. Uh, I immensely enjoy talking with our students, brainstorming sessions, uh, seeing their progress, guiding them to uh, the right direction. Sometimes they go into the, the off direction as well. Uh, sometimes we succeed, sometimes we fail. In the fail, we talk about you know, what went wrong, we go over those things. Uh, it's a part of education. We also get results as re research. It's a fantastic environment.